It all began under the night skies of an open-air meeting at 19th Street and the Heights Boulevard on July 27, 1932. There, a tall, rough 21-year-old by the name of James McKeehan responded to an invitation to accept Christ as his Savior. The preacher that night was well-known Pentecostal pioneer Raymond T. Ritchie. These were some of our movement's first fathers in the faith. Brother Ritchie and his father, E.N. Ritchie, had founded their ministry association only two years after the formation of the Assemblies of God in 1914. With a young James McKeehan on serious fire for God, the homes on Houston's north side where he delivered ice also began hearing the word of God through his personal witness and hand-delivered gospel tracts. The message was received well among so many in the Lindale edition that McKeehan was able to lead and inspire the community in the building of its first modest church building. Truly from the ground up, after acquiring property, McKeehan with a following of friends and neighboring men went into the nearby forest, themselves cut the timbers and transported them to the mill, out of which was constructed a log cabin church. All of this began on the same basic site Lindale occupies today. Having married a beautiful young Leona Pearsall, the young pastor had found his lifelong partner to fulfill a lifetime calling. God blessed the pastor and his wife with two sons, Richard, Don, and a daughter, Barbara. Richard, the eldest, followed in his father's footsteps, being recognized as a great preacher teacher with a most gifted voice. Don became a highly successful businessman and church leader. Barbara retained her mother's beauty and excelled musically and vocally. What an inestimable gift to the life and legacy of Lindale this special family proved to be and continues through today. Along with this first family came hundreds of children in the faith destined to become foundational leaders for generations to come. As the church grew, it was rich in association with many renowned and anointed men, women, neighboring pastors, evangelists, missionaries, educators, and church leaders who were world changers. Here are some of Lindell's ministry guests in those years. interesting fact of Lindell's history occurs in the mid-1940s during which Brother McKeehan left the church to take a position with the Texas District of the Assemblies of God. During that brief period of less than two years, the church was pastored by Reverend Lorena Robertson, who happens to be the grandmother of Pastor Meeks. Brother McKeehan had taken the appointment under the condition that should he want to return to his church, Reverend Robertson would step aside for his return, no questions asked, which was exactly what happened. Lorena Robertson went on to pastor First Assembly and Brother McKeehan picked up from where he left off. Here is a picture of Sister Robertson and Brother McKeehan on a train bound for the General Council. The two of them are leading the other passengers in worship. Two other names of so many notable associate pastors over the years are longtime associate Reverend Vincent Rockerford and Reverend Martin Gabler, whose congregation Jensen Drive Assembly merged with Lindale. Both were remarkable men. Brother Mack, as his friends affectionately knew him, was well known by a large following on radio and TV as the voice of Counsel for Living. This avenue of spreading the gospel, along with a great organization of faithful church supporters, 
poised Lindale for a position of influence worldwide through the airwaves, publications, overseas missions, and partnering with other ministries, both locally and nationally, such as Teen Challenge. The heart of Lindale always emphasized missions. It always emphasized evangelizing and winning the lost. By the late 60s and early 70s, there was a fresh wind of revival blowing across America. And in Houston, Lindale was prominent as one of the most on fire churches in the nation. In 1971 and 72, there was such a continuous move of God on the house that the pulpit was filled night after night, week after week, with anointed guests and evangelists. During that span of 18 months, over 300 services were conducted by Brother McKee and, and 43 different preacher evangelists, wearing them out one after another. Among them were names such as Dwight Thompson, W.S. Graham, John Osteen, Jimmy Swaggart, Alan Randolph, John G. Hall, the McDuff Brothers, Nancy Harmon. These were some of Lindale's favorites and most responded to. The most extended revival of this period was with the Meeks family. This revival went for nine consecutive weeks, 11 altogether, as over 400 people were saved and baptized in the Holy Spirit. On one Sunday alone, over 200 were baptized in water and joined the church rolls. Four years prior to this, the church had begun plans to expand and build a new sanctuary. This necessity became all the more apparent with this time of explosive growth. Out of this came a new sanctuary and expanded facilities which was dedicated in June of 1978. Of the many years of faithful and anointed labor on behalf of Pastor McKeehan, it is clear that not only he and his family, but so many others inspired by this legacy have also invested their lives and God-given gifts to carry forward the gospel. The truth, however, is that all of this great heritage is not so much about what all any of us have done for the Lord, but more about how good God has been to all of us through the years. What a privilege it has been and continues to be serving God with one another. Your and my parents and grandparents gave their lives to this work. Now we give ours to promote it forward as another generation prepares itself to take up Christ's cross. As Paul said, Therefore, I have reason to glory in Christ Jesus in the things which pertain to God. For I will not dare to speak of any of these things which Christ has not accomplished through me in word and deed, in mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that I have fully preached, and we have fully preached, the gospel of Christ. Christ.